Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, indeed, uh, all hands need to be on deck. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the traffic situation at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway this morning. Uh, Terrible gridlock, to say the least. So uh, these were the early morning images uh, you see. But uh, yeah, it's since uh, built up. So heavy tailback, huge tailback across those other areas. And so... Um, if you've never been in this sort of traffic, I mean, it's really hard. On one hand, you have a place to go to Imagine you have a deadline. You have to be at a place by, let's say, 8 a.m. and 7 a.m. You're stuck in this traffic that is not moving. If you, if you, if you could see, it's completely locked down. I mean, this is huge. And I remember we were talking about this when this road closure uh, was going to start. By the way, I think it's about a month already. It's probably marking one month anniversary of the closure. And we were talking about this that, I mean, couldn't we have done this in a more creative way? Well, there will always be questions about what happens, but uh, while they're doing that, they also need to ensure that if any, you know, uh, what's the word they use now, all those articulated vehicles, oh, yeah. when it does happen, they need to be find a way to respond and respond in good time. While, uh, yes, the commuters also have a huge role to play, but here, there you go, the images of... Uh, uh, what is going on at the moment. But we'll bring you more information as we get them from that road. So, on to our theme for today, which has to do with, uh, I know, there's been a lot of talk about tax uh, these days. The federal government, or, uh, some 7.2, 7.5%, some argue, why raise taxes? Why not increase the tax base, bring more people into the tax net? Wouldn't that give you more results, if not uh, much more than increasing all of those? Yes, there might have been comparative analysis for uh, what taxes Nigerians pay and what's obtainable elsewhere, but you also bandy all sorts of things. But now, there is this... Uh, Communication service tax, uh, communication service tax bill, which is being considered in the Senate uh, 2019. Uh, Senator Ali Ndume joins us this morning. He's the chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army. He's also the sponsor of that particular motion. So he's here to shed some light on that particular bill. Good morning, Senator. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, viewers. Well. You know, when people hear taxes, their ears tingle. They just ask themselves, oh, what again? So could you tell us, Senator, why did you decide to sponsor this bill? Uh, first of all, uh, you said it uh, all, that there is a need uh, to definitely expand the uh, revenue base of government, and that is the uh, uh, taxation or tax net network. Uh, I sponsored this bill in the 8th Senate. Unfortunately, because of time, it didn't go through. And that I, I considered because of the deficiency or the deficit we always have in the sources that we use to sponsor our national uh, budget. We go on borrowing while we can look at our, our revenue or tax base and uh, expand on it or the to, to increase uh, the revenue to the government. Now the government is saying that it will, it will want to increase uh, BAT by 2.2% uh, two, two, uh, or 2.5%. Um, then that made me also to say now it's time to uh, you know, provide alternative for government by expanding the revenue base to introduce the uh, CST, that is the communication service tax, which will affect as just a segment of the society instead of increasing VAT that will affect all of the society, especially the more vulnerable poor that are grumbling with economic hardship at this time. My quarrel with the, the VAT actually is the timing and the situation Nigerians find themselves right now. And I think that the communication service tax is a better alternative that will generate the required uh, uh, revenue to the government. And so 
uh, I sponsor that uh, that uh, that uh, communication service tax. And let me add uh, that this is not new. It's been practiced in so many countries. I, the, the studies I did gave me about more than 83 countries all over, and specifically uh, even our neighbor here, Ghana, uh, recently, on 1st October, actually, uh, increased their communication service tax from 6% to 9%. The communication service tax in Ghana was uh, introduced in 2008. And uh, I think uh, Ghana is a, is a, is a very uh, close example of an economy that is recovering and improving uh, and is doing very well. So we need to look at what they are doing. And uh, um, strange enough, again, Ghana is reducing the tax, uh, the uh, VAT, I mean VAT tax, uh, and increasing the communication service tax. And we're just introducing, going to, that is if it gets through, uh, introducing the communication service tax as better alternative than increasing tax, which definitely will have spiral effect on the prices of goods and services. A, that uh, you want the, the tax to affect for a few people and not affect the larger percentage of the people. But that particular concept, I mean, why that? Because look, whatever money is gotten from tax is supposed to be used to develop infrastructure for everybody. I understand, but tax are charged and paid for, uh, by those that can pay. Those uh, vulnerable poor, right now, what, what, what I'm saying is the timing to uh, actually uh, makes it inappropriate uh, for the increase. Right now, you know what we are going uh, through. You are a Nigerian. Uh, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, and then you have so many Nigerians that can afford to pay the tax. Why don't you tax those that can afford uh, paying the tax first or even look more at uh, other sources of uh, uh, revenue like property tax, like luxury goods tax? You charge the, the rich and then allow the poor first. If you want to carry the poor along, you carry them gradually. But now that Nigerians are quite, in, 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 you know, going through hardship economically and then you, you just slam... 2.5% uh, or 2.2% uh, increase on VAT will definitely have a spiral effect on, on, on the majority, and that is the poor. Um, ironically, uh, the statistics show that majority of uh, Nigerian resources, and by the way, the world or African resources, is in the hands of few. If that is the case, which is a, which it is, then you charge them more, and then the, uh, the majority who should benefit. In, in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of redistributing income so that the poor can have uh, more, and those that have more will, will give a little out of it as far as um, uh, the taxation is concerned okay. because they can afford it. So but those so that man. cannot afford it or that are just... If, if, if I may uh, button, should, pardon me. Now... Isn't it ironic? I'm, I'm just curious. You have spoken against, you know, the value-added tax increase from, you know, 5% to 7.2 or 7.5. And we know that VAT is for, I mean, it's something you can avoid. You can choose to not per perhaps go to that restaurant to eat. You can choose to cook at home, as they have said. But then looking at this now, this new uh, communication service tax bill, a lot of people cannot do without using their mobile phones. In fact, according to the NCC, 173 million uh, active mobile lines have been recorded as of June this year. So isn't it ironic that you are against a tax that people can avoid and you are pushing forward a tax that people cannot exactly do without? SMS, MMS, and what have you. I think, I think, uh, I think you are saying the opposite. Uh, the, when you increase VAT, it, it, it affects every goods and services. But when you increase uh, communication service tax, it only affects uh, uh, those that use telephone. And uh, let's be honest with you, and by Nigerian standard, those that use telephone are those you can't, in, by Nigerian standard, you can't call them poor, poor, poor people. In fact, the poorest of the poor live in areas where they, the services are not even available. Uh, if, if I and may. Then you go I... and charge them because wherever they, Pardon where, me. wherever they are, if you increase VAT, the, every Nigerian will be affected in terms of goods and services. You know, I just, That's why I just I say quoted, it's better uh, to pay, to ask those that... 
I just quoted a figure from the NCC that says... Instead of asking every poor man to pay. If I may, I just quoted a figure from the NCC that says there are 173... No, yeah, no, no, I take you on that figure. Exactly. So, I mean, that's almost... The, the number, the number they, they, they have is over 100 million, but the users are about 60 million. And we have over 200 uh, 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 Nigerians. Instead, and uh, tax, VAT will affect the 200 million Nigerians that you have. But the communication service tax will only affect the 60 million that you are talking about. And it's discretionary. If you don't want to talk too much, uh, that means you're going to pay less. But uh, a poor man on the street will have to use the road, will have to transport himself, will have to go to market and buy gari. And every price of those products will go up definitely when you increase uh, VAT. That is what I'm saying. I, I ask those that can pay uh, to pay. But those, that, those poor people uh, that, that cannot afford it should not be asked to pay. And uh, in fact, the beneficiaries of the tax or VAT tax is not the poor again. Majority of it, as you said, the 85 percent of it will go to the state and the like. But who who is the state? Who is benefiting from the state? It's just the less than five percent people. For example, people like me, I'm a beneficiary because I'm a legislator. I'm being paid, uh, but, uh, and uh, civil servants will be paid. And as you know, that all this money, 70 percent of it in the budget, if in in, in most of the states, go for overhead and uh, what do they call it, personnel costs and overhead. Who are, these, who are the consumers or the users or the beneficiaries of these uh, 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 overhead and personnel costs? Workers, uh, uh, judicial staff, civil servants, and it. The poor man does not benefit. What this poor man sees and benefits sparingly is uh, the 30% that is dedicated to capital. And that is when you use that if the, 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 the infrastructure is being done, workers are being paid, ordinary person is being employed. So I think, uh, I think you are the one that is talking the opposite instead, or you're, you're turning it upside down. What okay. I'm saying is yes, the government needs money in order to provide services, but that money should come from those that have it. Okay, just to be clear, uh, Senator Ndume, you referenced Ghana. Yeah. Now, this came into effect on October the 1st, as you said. So this is how it works in Ghana. If you pay 200 naira, for and, example, and, and, and uh, let, let, me, let me, just a moment. So if you pay 200 naira, for example, to buy airtime, there's, there's an amount that is yes. deducted. So you don't get 200, you get 190. So as it were, there's a deficit. And you expect that people will want to put that cost on others. And you say that 60 million mobile phone users are in Nigeria. But believe me, if you go to villages, you find these people that need to buy airtime. So once again, who do you define as the poor people that benefit from this? I, I'm still not clear. The poor, the, 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 poor people, the poor people are those that are more than 100 million that don't have a telephone. And you're asking them to pay. That's what I'm saying. Don't ask, don't charge those poor people, charge those that have a telephone. If I have my mother in the village, I can afford to buy her telephone and uh, give it to her in the village. And if there is service, it means I can pay. But if you increase that, and a poor man that is struggling to survive will now have to grapple and deal with increase in prices of essential services that he cannot avoid. He must buy food. He must go to a village. He must buy fertilizer. All these products will go up all the goods and services will go up. What I'm saying is that if somebody, and, and by the way, let me say that in Nigeria, by in Nigerian context, people don't even know how much they pay for the telephone services. All they do is to pay. They want to talk, and if they say one minute remaining, you buy another recharge card. Nobody knows, uh, and nobody is even complaining about how much they are being charged on the uh, GSM or telephone services provided in this country. But Senator, I am not against know. increase in taxes. Okay. But for increase in tax in this year and under the circumstances Nigerians are today is inappropriate. You, know, you speak about uh, not yes. allowing the yes, poor our, to yes, suffer our this tax. Is low, for example, five yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. Just a minute, Senator. You know, but we will we'll show you the list of those goods that are affected by this tax and see if those quote-unquote poor people who you say you don't want to be affected fall into that bracket in the moment. But why is this 9%? Because, I mean, the fact you say you don't want people to suffer is about, they say 7.2% or is it 75 But this is 9%. Why? 
Well, I got the figure 9% from the studies I make uh, on countries that are, uh, uh, you know, that are implementing the, the uh, communication service tax. Ghana charges 60% until 1st October. They moved their, they increased their communication service tax from 6% to 9% with the effect of Octo uh, from October this year, October 1st. And they reduce VAT. Uh, you see my emphasis, they reduce VAT. What you are talking about is not that I'm saying um, the VAT should not be increased. One, I say the timing and the condition our citizens, the poor citizens are in now, you know, calls for consideration. If, yes, if the government needs more money to come in, the communication service tax is one of the ways to go. Then the next one that I'm even working on is property tax. If you have properties, it means you are rich, you can afford to pay on it. But to touch on or increase the communication, uh, I mean, uh, uh, VAT at this time is something that I don't support and many Nigerians don't support. And as I said, it's nothing personal. It's just that I'm a representative of the people and people keep on calling me. Even right in this year's studio, people are supporting, as uh, my supporters, supporting uh, my position that VAT should not be increased. Instead, they should go and tax the people that can pay. I don't know who those people are, Senator, who are giving you that in that studio. I have to take a second look at you those. You want me to, I, will not, I will not name them so that you don't fire them, you know. <laughs> but, you know, Senator, about this tax, if, if you look at uh, uh, Ghana's Communication Service Tax Amendment Act of 2013, uh, yes, they, they talk about the imposition of that Communication Service Tax in uh, Section 1, Sub 1, and 2, but then... They also go on to give the reason in terms of when they uh, talk about who is who this tax can who should pay this tax, but they plow this back into the telecommunications sector because here in your own bill you say that the FIRS will uh, there yes they will be the ones to collect this tax and remit to the federal government so. We didn't see anywhere in the bill where they are required to remit or to ensure that it is channeled toward providing infrastructure for the telecom sector, as you see in, the, in Ghana's version, which you also researched. Well, that's the next step. You know, the bill has just gone through first reading. I'm not a tax expert. I just have this idea and it will be subjected to public hearing. So experts like you or the like can come in and, uh, and, and put forward their input. In fact, left to me, taxes like VAT and uh, the communication service tax should be set aside to exclusively deal with the infrastructure deficit that we have in this country. And in fact, I'm proposing that some percentage of the communication service tax should be channeled towards the social intervention program, which is laudable that the government is embarking, but it's just a policy and there is the need for law or, or, or constant source uh, so that uh, projects, laudable uh, federal government projects like uh, N Power, like Trader Money, like uh, even the Anco borrowers and the fertilizer subsidy and all those that will, things that will help the poor can be, uh, the, the money generated from that can be channeled towards it. See, we have to be very innovative in, uh, in terms of uh, sources of revenue in order to um, uh, you know, cope with the, the, the various demands that, that we have in terms of um, government services to the people. And as I said, I use Ghana as an example because Ghana is an economy that is so small, country that is small, at one time was depending on countries like Nigeria, but now they have gotten their act together and they are moving forward. And uh, so that's why I looked at what they are doing and I got this idea that, hey, you can you can key into communication service tax, which will provide you the resources that you need without hurting the vulnerable or the poorest of the poor. Um, I'm gonna, uh, was there any engagement with operators in this field before you came up with this tax? Because they also see and have a copy of this Ghana service tax. So, and we know the process they went through before they came up with theirs. Did you engage, have you engaged well, anyone? I 
No, 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 no. I didn't engage. I, I didn't engage anybody. But I know I, they will come after me on that. But the good thing about it is that the same operators that we have in Nigeria are the same operators uh, operating in Ghana that have been paying this tax for the past ten years. In fact, Ghana, recent, as I said, recently increased their own. So if they are not complaining about paying tax in Ghana, why would they complain about that? You know, introducing that tax in uh, in in Nigeria. But I know that the operators will, will, uh, will oppose this and they will, uh, as business, typically of business, they will try to do everything um, to uh, frustrate or even stop the bill. But uh, to me, I have done my own as a representative of the people. I have spoken on behalf of the Nigerian masses. It is left, you know, it's not yet done. It will have to go through second reading and third reading, and even if it is passed in the National Assembly, Mr. President have to accent to it before it becomes a law. For me, I have done mine, and I will continue to uh, talk to the public, educate, you know, to, uh, uh, educate those that uh, need to be talked to to see that, uh, hey, it's, it's, it's increasing this uh, VAT at this time is not the right thing. Uh, we have other sources that we, we, we have to look at, broadening the revenue base or the tax net, so that you can get more without necessarily uh, going after the poor. So, well, we do have uh, Mr. Lushola Tenyola here with us in the studio. He's the president, Association of Telecom Companies of Nigeria, ATCON. Uh, so we also like you to hear him out and get that perspective, since you also say, well, they, they may, you, who knows if you're right on the money. Well, good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning to you. Well, you may have heard the senator talking about the reasons why he's coming up with this. He thinks, he says, look, he doesn't want the poor to suffer from the VAT increase. So he would rather have those who can pay this tax be taxed, hence introduction of this communication service tax bill. Uh, that isn't logical. Uh, the VAT applies to luxury items, and most of those luxury items are for those that can afford it. Um, so the poor would not really be impacted by the proposed 7.5% has been proposed by government to uh, be increased and effective possibly next year. What this 9% communication tax does is to eliminate millions of Nigerians from accessing affordable data services and voice calls. As you know, around the world, the price of the voice and data services are going down. So anything to avoid that should be um, taken on board by government. Yes, we understand that government has a deficit in its budget, but there are other means to actually accommodate uh, the issue around this deficit rather than pushing it onto 173 million subscribers. He says that that's it. So 173 million subscribers includes those that can't afford to even recharge more than 200 naira per month on their, on their phones. So if you are now placing an additional burden on them. And I heard the reference to Ghana. Ghana doesn't have as many taxes applied to any sector like, they, like we have in Nigeria. We have 39 taxes applied and levies applied to our sector already. This is a consumer tax and it is inappropriate and, well, ill-timed, to be fairly honest. Even though Senator thinks it's properly timed. But we'll, we'll get more perspectives on this so you can provide us with data and also hear the Senator out. When we come back in a moment, stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise. Well, Mr. Tenola, you were making a point about the taxes available in Ghana and in comparative analysis to Nigeria vis-a-vis uh, -vis what the senator has said. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, not only the percentage in terms of the accumulated percentage applied to corporates is somewhat lower, the numbers of tax applied are less. Um, you also have to consider the fact that Ghana market is much smaller than Nigeria's. The whole total population in Ghana is 35 million or thereabouts. Uh, the number of subscribers is around 20, 20 million plus. You have five operators, major operators that are operating in that, what you could call a saturated market. 
There are other means that they obviously look at. They have some oil receipts and they have cocoa and gold, as it's known as the Gold Coast. So they already have some form of mixed economy. We predominantly are dependent on oil. Um, so looking at the telco sector as another form of cash cow cannot be the way and answer to the problems of non-diversification of the Nigerian economy. So what we've ad advocated in the past, and this was back in 2016, November the 3rd precisely, mm -hmm. the 8th Assembly, National Assembly, where we approached, they agreed with us that this tax was not a tax applicable to the Nigerian context. We need to grow the ICT industry. We need to create jobs for the youth. And as jobs for the youth are created, there's a form of taxes applied on the employees. So widening the base is one way. VAT applies to that widening of the base, not sector specific taxes as being copied from Ghana. So unless there's a real reason behind this, then we say no to the taxes because it impacts the poor rather than the rich. That's the thing. Senator Ndume believes that this tax would actually help the poor other than the rich. So I'd also want him to clarify just for a moment. Now, Senator Ndume, you've listened to him. So how do you respond, especially because you think that this communications bill or this tax rather, is going to favor the poor? Well, um, I appreciate um, his um, concerns as a businessman. But let me say, uh, first of all, that uh, the burden of that tax is on, on the consumer. And, and uh, as I said, the bill is going through first, uh, first reading. And it's going to, we are going to co uh, conduct public hearing for, the peop for people to come and uh, you know, uh, put forward their views. And, and uh, besides uh, that, too, when he's talking about um, the, the Ghana case and uh, the Nigerian case where they have multiple taxes, these are the details that we will look at when we get to the uh, second reading, and that is when the public hearing is, uh, 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 you know, uh, conducted. Uh, and it provides them opportunity to now put forward their arguments as to why this tax is, uh, is unnecessary. But I still maintain my position. And as I said, I'm not just acting on my own. He is acting for companies that are interested in this. And uh, as, as he observed, that uh, that is going to affect the number of consumers and uh, uh, the, the, uh, as to their access to, uh, to, the, to their various networks. We know that uh, in Nigeria, the telecom service providers are charging one of the highest rates that you can ever find. In fact, we don't even know what we pay for the services they provide to us. I, for example, want to talk, want my phone to, be my, the network to be there. And when they say one minute remaining, I just go and recharge it. Nobody gives me monthly bill to say that this is what I'm exactly paying per minute. So if there is any adverse effect as to a number, number of, uh, of uh, customers or the, that uh, have access to their, to their services, they can reduce those prices. They are supposed to be reducing the prices and expand the base. Nigeria is a very, very huge market that they can expand. Everybody now, despite the fact that uh, telephone in Nigeria, the GSM service is one of the most expensive, Nigerians, you know, go, go for these uh, services. And as I said, uh, this is something that uh, will affect the few instead of going the VAT way. That is my own, that instead of going the VAT way, why don't you expand the revenue base, like the communication service tax and the property tax, I'm working on that too, that those that can pay should pay, and those that cannot pay should not be asked to pay more. That is my... The, if we my, could just my, backtrack my, a, big, a bit, I just want to get clarity. Now, this communication tax, who will bear the burden? Is it the final consumer or the service provider? Because you say he represents the service providers and they don't want it, but who bears this burden eventually? Is it the user or the company? 
Yes, it's the, the user is the one that pays the communication service tax. And the provider is the one complaining. That is what I don't understand. Ironic, then. If the consumers are against, uh, consumers are clearly against VAT. Nigerians are clearly against VAT. And that is the consumers or whoever is going to be taxed. But so, when I introduced the, uh, the communication service tax as an alternative, the uh, uh, consumers who are supposed to pay are not complaining yet. So, so this goes back to our previous and if conversation. That is introduced if and there consumers are 100, complain, pardon me, we, we, if there are 173 million mobile phone subscribers or mobile users in the country, that means you're taxing almost everybody in the country. So isn't it ironic that not, you... No, 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 no. No, no. According please. to the I, NCC, I, I, there are 173 about million this. Nigerians mobile. are yet to get there. Majority of Nigerians are still without phone. This is NCC. This is not me. You could check their website. 173 million active, uh, you know, mobile lines in the country as it as it is now. Yeah. So that's not me. That's the NCC. No, that's the subscribers you are talking about. That's not the number of people that own the handset. That's the I number have about of four mobile lines, lines right now. in Nigeria. So you mobile count it lines as four that buy airtime, that send SMS, and what have you. So, I mean, I think... Yes, I have four lines because one, of the, one, one or two of the services fail. An average Nigerian who uses telephone has minimum of two SIM cards. I have four. I have, uh, I have MTN, I have uh, um, uh, Glow, I have uh, 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 9Mobile, or is it the recent one? I have 80 Salat. So do you count that as four people? It's one. All In right, fact, so some people have more than that. We, we've, we've now been joined by uh, Chief Deolo Gumbanjo, who is the president of National Association of Telecom Subscribers of Nigeria. So he's here in the studio to get uh, uh, hear the perspective of subscribers, users, who this tax will affect. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, you might have heard the senator. He, he suggests that uh, his ra rationale concerning this particular tax, the user, these are people who can pay, as opposed to those who are really poor, who can't pay. It's rather unfortunate, um, coming from the senator's angle. And um, I must also reiterate the fact that 173 million lines, if the senator has four, is still using telecom services with those four. Yeah, but he's saying that doesn't qualify him as poor. And that's why he's trying to fault that one, those figures from NCC as though that figure is representative of 173 million Nigerians. So he's saying one person having four lines doesn't translate to 173 million people using one per line. Well, yes. But take, for instance, he has four. There, he, did, he also did say that um, the average one has two. Divide that by two. That is a whopping 85 million Nigerians, so to say, or about um, 90 million Nigerians. Now, you want to start impoverishing the 90 million Nigerians by the Aboki, for instance, who is doing shoes and all that, is using phones. You are now introducing communication tax for SMS, voice, data, when worldwide we are looking at bringing the cost of te telecom services down. By the way, do you know that every recharge card you buy, there is a 5% VAT being charged as we speak. So many uh, taxes on telecoms. I mean, why telecoms? I remember uh, during the early days of um, uh, uh, Minister Adebayo Shitu, uh, I, I think one senator, I, I don't know whether it's still Senator Ndume, that also brought this up. That was um, about uh, three, four years back. Why telecoms again? Yeah, That's why the array of taxes. There was one sponsored by Honorable Bid Uchena. Uh, yeah. Then there was another authored by uh, Honorable Said Fijabi. I think he had the first reading on the 4th of April 2016. So, and then you have this one. Senator also brought one previously, as he said. 2016. 2016. Now, why do you want to tax and tax and tax, tax upon taxes on the telecom sector that affects the life of the common man? You know, maybe this is interesting because, I mean, if you look at GDP figures for I mean, recently released, you realize that the ICT sector contributed 
a large chunk. So, I mean, isn't it just, doesn't it make sense? It appears as let's, though let's, you're bringing in a lot of money, so yeah, maybe there should be like more tax. Yeah, it looks like the senator hasn't done any impact analysis and he's got his figures all over the place. So, and even how he's expressing the justification behind is is illogical. How? Uh, he, you know, he's using the fact that he's got four lines. Mm -hmm. He doesn't realize that not every Nigerian has four lines. It, there could be quite a number in that sample that have one SIM card for a phone that represents the poor. The issue that is wider is that he's now touched on services that the average Nigerian needs to use as a tool for productivity, for running their business. And if you continue to do that, it would dissuade them from using those services because it would cost more. And as my colleague uh, has said this morning, we need to reduce the cost. And then he makes a comment saying that service providers are here because of the interest. Well, we're all consumers at the end of the day, and we want to pay less for the services because it benefits us to talk longer. I remember you mentioned others, uh, distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly trying to bring in different types of uh, CSTs. There was also a comment made by the Syrian governor where they were actually trying to say only tax those that can speak for three minutes. I mean, that's absurd. So you can see that the tax and the, the arguments behind it doesn't actually warrant it to go through the second reading at all because it is an indirect tax on usage which will impact those poor, which are a lot more than richer on the networks. So the contribution to GDP is a matter of fact, is that the economy is no longer as buoyant as it was. It's, it's trickling at 1.9%. So the actual absolute figure that 30% represents is actually on $369 million billion. That's our GDP now. <clears throat> our GDP now. What we are our advocate is that if you create a conducive environment, that contribution can increase on the back of a GDP base that will also increase. But we have to realize that distribution of wealth isn't as normal mm -hmm. as it is in Nigeria. So those in Abuja, especially the senators, they have much more access to these services. But remember, Nigeria is not just about Abuja. It's about the common man on the street you know, that would need access to his services. The senator also spoke about part of the reason why he's coming up with this CST. So, Senator, could you shed some light? Did you say uh, you wanted a better way of distributing wealth in such a way that it will not affect the ordinary people? Could you explain what exactly, how this is going to achieve that? Well, first of all, let me uh, tell the two gentlemen that uh, I am a senator representing people and the law presented is uh, at the first stage. The, there is a procedure. So uh, I don't think um, the use of certain language like that is unfortunate, a senator is doing this and my, my contribution is illogical and all that is not, uh, I, I don't expect that to come from uh, the personalities sitting down there. I am representing people, I talk to the people, as I said, even in this studio, I, I talked with some people and that is the poor and they use the telephone and they are of the view that uh, for now, Going, by to, uh, going the way of increasing VAT tax uh, at this time is not the way to go. And looking at broader revenue base should include the uh, 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 communication service tax, and which is being uh, charged every, in many countries. And I gave an example of nearby Ghana. Yes, maybe uh, the, the fact that he said that uh, there are multiple taxes in the communication uh, sector, that is something that they should look at who, what are those taxes? I'm interested in you know expanding the, the, the taxation net to increase the funds that go into the consolidated revenue uh, account for distribution to states to provide services for Nigerians. I'm not a, I'm not uh, putting this uh, doing this uh, for personal reasons. If I'm not a senator, maybe I, as a businessman that I am, I will be you know minding my own business and paying it. If I can afford to pay, I pay for it. But 
But as a representative of the people, I can assure you that people are not, uh, you know, for uh, 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 value-added tax increase, but they are disposable to increase, uh, uh, you know, introducing communication service tax, which is everywhere. And uh, as I said, uh, looking at the other uh, uh, person, um, when you look at uh, uh, the, uh, uh, subscri the president, with all due respect, the president of the uh, uh, telephone subscribers that is sitting down there making contributions, he's not a poor man. He doesn't look like a poor man. But when we do public hearing and get public uh, 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 response uh, to, 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 to this, then we will know. Uh, I, I, I'm supposed, if they say they charge uh, the, the telephone subscriber president more taxes, like even putting a tax on the suit that he's wearing, it's okay because an average, not, not all average Nigerians can afford that kind of a suit. So what I'm saying is if you are rich, you should pay more. If you are poor, you should pay less. That is all I'm saying. No. But, but Senator, uh, widening the tax base is different from introducing new taxes. So those are two different yes. things. So this is a new no, the, tax the, the, that you the, 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 the tax base now is single, VAT only. Yeah, but they also spoke so about In Nigeria, the, it's only VAT. Yeah, but there's also VAT in I'm the telecom sector. I'm working on even property tax. Yeah, property tax is different because not everybody, the, you know, to, to play in that field, you have to have some, certain leverage and, you know, status. But for this particular one, this not is, everybody there's also has VAT, the telephone too. But, but there's also VAT in the telecom sector. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's VAT in the telecom sector, 5%, I understand. In some countries, as you say, the VAT is up to 20%. So, but I know that. In, in Ghana, it's, it's 15%. But what I'm saying is Nigerians are not ready or are not prepared for a VAT increase now. So, and we need more money to come into the account of the federal government to do what they need to do. So why don't you look at communication service tax, charge people that can pay, Charge a tax on luxury items, uh, like people wearing designer suits and all that kind of a thing. They will pay, pay, pay more because they can afford to pay it. All I'm saying is that poor people should not be charged now. Let the economy get stable. Let the, 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 if there's prosperity in uh, prosperity in, 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 in the economy and people are not complaining. We're going through hardships now and you introduce VAT again, every price of the product will go and everybody will be affected. If you introduce a communication service tax, it will have only aff uh, affect all, uh, only those that, uh, that, that own telephone. And you know that you know, it's not poor man yet. Poor, man, poor men in Nigeria, the poorest of the poor, who, are, who form the majority don't have telephones. I, in fact, cannot even afford telephone. Okay, Senator Andrew May, now this is coming at a very interesting time. There have been conversations around yeah. different charges and bills that have been introduced or that are being proposed, you know, by the government and now the National Assembly. I mean, you have the deposit and withdrawal charges that were introduced, uh, you know, by the government. You, you, you have the value-added tax, which you have also talked about. There's the online VAT. Or in fact, take a look at that. You have value-added tax that is meant to increase from 5% to 7.5%, and people are still trying to grapple with the conversation around that. You have talked about it. There's the online VAT, which perhaps should kick off next year. And this is 5% on local online purchases with a bank card. It's not just that. We have more. There's also the highway toll, which people are, I mean, saying federal highways. Well, there's a lot of conversation around that. Put that aside. There's a the bank charges, which I talked about, you know, for individual and, you know, corporate users. And there's the now proposed communication tax. If you're saying that you spoke with people, you consulted people, how much, I mean, because I imagine people are paying 200 naira and immediately 10 naira perhaps is deducted. So how are people favorable towards this tax? I'm just curious. Well, um, first of all, let me even say that we don't even know the, especially in the communication sector, we don't know how much VAT they are paying in to, 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 to the government. Because what is happening in other countries like Ghana, if you recharge your card with like 1,000, Immediately, it will show you that uh, uh, that uh, six percent then was de is, uh, is deducted. That is not the case uh, with Nigeria. All you all you get is that your balance, your your your, your telephone has been recharged, or your credit has been recharged with uh, the amount you paid. You don't know how much 
of that goes to the government. That is one. Two, uh, the various taxes. I, I, I kick against like the, the charges they are trying to introduce in the banking sector for so many reasons. But that is not uh, the subject matter of discussion now. But I want you to know that uh, as a representative of people, we, I personally, for example, I said, I can afford the, all this without complaining. But the poor man that I represent cannot afford it and have to speak on his behalf. I, I, I am, I'm looking forward to any, uh, any, any uh, telephone subscriber, poor telephone subscriber, not like our president, poor telephone subscriber that will come out to say, look, it's better to increase VAT and uh, do away with the, the communication service tax that you are providing. Uh, there's, there's even uh, the, the space to do that because there's... Uh, going to be public hearing on that. And as I said, it has to go through second reading. There are so many colleagues of mine. I'm not the only one. We are 109 in the Senate, or in fact, 460 in the National Assembly. The, even if the, bill, if the bill scales through the Senate, it has to be concurred by the House of Representatives. I know a lot of lobbying will be going on by the people that have it. They have normally. Normally in this country or in Africa or generally by human, people prefer to push uh, or, uh, this kind of a thing onto those that are poor, you know. So I'm not surprised with this, and I've been expecting that too. Uh, as I said, um, this is in the public domain now. It's for the public to decide uh, whether to, in, uh, to, uh, to agree or allow for increase in VAT or introduce things like the communication service tax, property tax, to expand the revenue base, go after those that have and then allow the have-nots to benefit from what they, you get from the haves. Well, uh, Senator, as you know, uh, in the, Africa, almost like the, this also affects uh, pay TV, which is going to happen in the future. So anyone who wants to, wants to watch, or your constituencies who wants to listen to you now, will have to pay the pay TV tax. But let me get them to respond to the part where you say you don't know how much they're even paying uh, in that particular sector. Thanks for that. <clears throat> it's rather surprising the Senator doesn't realize that the telecoms industry collectively, and this is conservatively, gives to the government 450 billion naira consistently year on year to the government's coffers. The 450 billion naira will increase if that sector improves. This tax will stifle the growth of that contribution to GDP and also to the 450 billion that they're expecting because the impact on it will be on the revenue. And as you reduce the revenue, the percentage of the tax, which is corporate taxes included in this, uh, if loss of jobs are then done just to accommodate this additional cost, because we are battling with 39 different taxes and the industry can't see why we have to now handle another indirect tax on behalf of government that really can look at other sources and means of reducing its governance cost to ensure that the ordinary Nigerian can benefit from the taxes that are already paid to government, which is sizable. Uh, 450 billion naira is a lot of money, uh, and the senator can then look at how that is actually spent by government. Well, um, I must um, educate the senator that every, I mean, the percentage of poor people that you know, are having phones are much, much more than the likes of um, the senator. And to put it succinctly, it's a minimum of about 75% of those who, who own phones are poor. All right. Well, we'll have to go. But Senator, all of these monies that are being collected, what's happening to those who are collecting these monies? What are they using them for? And then the cases that the consumers hear, citizens hear about them, they don't feel happy. So what kind of focus or attention are you giving to those who are managing these resources? Uh, in fact, my take on that is too radical because I'm not supporting the, the issue of collecting tax and paying it into consolidated revenue and then distributing it to various states. I think these monies <clears throat> should be set aside for specific purposes, provide security, provide uh, infrastructure, provide uh, a power that is needed, or, or you know, all that taxes that is being paid should be channeled into 
into infrastructural development so that the, all Nigerians will benefit. But right now, uh, the tax is being collected, distributed to state, federal government, and then you use it on less than 5% of Nigerians to, uh, in the name of uh, uh, personal, uh, personal overhead and uh, recurrent overhead in the budget. 70% of the Nigerian budget right now goes into personal and overhead. And that is another discussion all, uh, all around. I am not uh, supporting the fact that you pay taxes and then you distribute it to some people just to go and use it anyhow. I am of the view that taxes collected like the, uh, the, the, the communication service tax and in fact other taxes like, like VAT should be channeled directly into healthcare services, power, security, and, 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 all, on, and all those type of services. Then we can leave the money being generated through um, uh, the, the, uh, the oil that we, we sell to be used to run the government. But some the monies that uh, people are Nigerians, average Nigerians are asked to pay by way of taxes should be channeled for those that uh, those things that will benefit them. All right, Senator. That's my we, take on that. Okay, but as we'll, I said, we'll end on that note. Uh, so at least the public have had some hearing uh, on this before, perhaps second reading and public hearing of this bill because it's happened before and it failed. So we'll be looking to see how this plays out again. But I have to thank everyone for coming on. Uh, Senator Aline Dume is sponsor of that bill and chairman, Senate Committee on the Army. We we'll have also had uh, Mr. Olushola Tenyola, President, Association of Telecom Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, as well as uh, Chief Dilu Gumbanjo, who is the President, National Association of Telecom Subscribers of Nigeria, NATCOM. Gentlemen, thank you all for coming this morning.